What's going on everyone, Mr. Octagonal here, and we are back with the Detroit Lions franchise here on Madden 20. So of course, last episode, our Lions won uh, our first Super Bowl in franchise history, completing the 16-0 season, uh, the first 16-0 team to ever win a Super Bowl, and fitting that it's with this team, a squad that has not had really a whole lot of postseason luck in our history, and we finally did it. But obviously, this series is not over. We got a whole offseason to go through. This was streamed this past Wednesday on Twitch. So this is an offseason recap uh, for those who missed it and for those who did see it. If you want to refresh yourselves, that's fine. Or you can just go to the preseason festivities, which will also be in this episode. So here's a look at the Super Bowl roster before going into the offseason. Uh, we didn't have any personal retirements. There were a few big ones, most notably... I think Aaron Rodgers ended up retiring. Uh, so first step uh, here of the offseason is going to be re-signing. So we got some talent here. Uh, going to be re-signing the meme himself, Zach Zenner. He's coming back. And a common theme here was just trying to bring back some of our depth players. Travis Fulgham, another example. He is back with the squad. Devon McCullough, an undrafted rookie last season who made the final roster. He's going to get re-signed. Amani Oruwarie will be brought back on a two-year deal. And with Justin Coleman's contract up, he could be the number three corner. Jamal Agnew will be back on a one-year deal. Good special teams, kick and punt returner. And then Darvarius Fisher, someone who was on the practice squad last year, really intrigued me. He's a guy who I would like to have long-term as a depth piece. But we're going to let everyone else go. And there are a lot of talented guys, a lot of starters who are leaving. Guys like Harrison Smith, Taylor Decker, Justin Coleman, Miles Sanders, Matt Prater, all players who made really big impacts on the Super Bowl team last year. They are gone. I was looking to gauge the markout on certain players like Miles Sanders, Taylor Decker. I wanted to bring them back, but preferably on cheaper contracts, see if we could uh, bring them back that way. So this is actually a pretty talented free agency class. Byron Jones, Chris Jones, Yannick Ngakwe, Titus Howard, Nikhil Harry, Michael Gallup. You know, there are some good players in this class. So the big fish we're trying to get is Titus Howard. With Taylor Decker, I guess, gone now, it would be good to get a young, really good tackle in Howard. He wanted three years 30. I'm giving him two years 25. I don't want to give him three years. Uh, we're also going after Paris Campbell, Tony Pollard, Charles Harris, Obi Melofon, Wu, Danny Shelton, Akeem Perkins, Duke Riley, Tyrell Crosby, and Michael Jordan trying to get some depth pieces. And then I wanted to bring back Matthew Stafford back. It, it, I just, I want to win that man a ring. He deserves a ring, even if it's as a backup. Staff, Stafford deserves to uh, win a championship. So we would get pretty much everybody except for one. And unfortunately, that one that we didn't get was Titus Howard, the big player we were trying to go after. So that kind of sucks. And to make things even worse, you know where he signed? The Green Bay Packers. He wanted that three-year deal. I was giving him more money, but on a shorter contract. I'm surprised. I don't know why he didn't take ours, but okay. So Titus Howard, now a Green Bay Packer, going to have to face against him twice a year. Here's a look how uh, the free agency went. Uh, a lot of big names going to new places. Obviously, Titus Howard going in division. Leonard Fournette is the top player who stayed on his current team, which is ironic because of uh, what's been happening in real life with Leonard Fournette. There's Ja'Kai Polite. He's joining the Packers as well. Taylor Decker is going to be a Jacksonville Jaguar. Jerry Tillery is going to the Eagles. Uh, I want to say Justin Coleman went to Carolina, yes. Miles Sanders is going to the Raiders. He's going to try to replace Josh Jacobs. And I don't think uh, Matt Prater signed anywhere. So on to the NFL draft now. Casey Burgess, for wide receiver, goes number one to the Steelers. Dolphins get Frank Beekman, a safety at number two. Bears get Charlie Brackens, tight end at three. Giants get the best player in the draft, Tabue Achu, an edge rusher from Missouri State. And this is where things get weird. I accidentally pressed skip to user pick. I tried to get out of it, and I didn't save the, the save file before the draft. So I was worried sick that the guy I wanted was gone. I assumed that I was just going to have to trade up for the player who I wanted to pick. And there was no going back because I didn't save. And somehow, someway, the player I wanted was still on the board. Cornerback Devontae Higgins out of Louisville. I thought we were going to have to move up maybe four or five spots to get him. So... This skipping of the draft actually kind of worked out for us. Devontae Higgins is a 74 of hidden development, the number 14 player in the class. 
Good athleticism, 80 man, 80 zone, pretty low play rec. He will likely be competing with Amani Oruarie for the number three cornerback spot. But I want to get younger at corner. Justin Coleman is obviously gone. Uh, Slay and Awuzie aren't getting any younger. So now on to the second round. The guy I want is Kai Cameo, a defensive tackle. And he goes the pick directly before us to the Kansas City Chiefs. This is deja vu. Remember last year in the first round, we wanted a defensive tackle out of Illinois like Kai Cameo. Uh, last year, it was Melvin Harris who went one pick before us. Well, it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. Not only did it prompt us to trade for Ed Oliver, but we also picked Lawrence Parnell because of it. So if Melvin Harris didn't slip, Ed Oliver nor Lawrence Parnell would be on this roster. So while I was upset that we didn't get Kai Cameo, I figured it would be a blessing in disguise. So uh, we're not actually going to pick someone with pick 64. It will be traded away to the Denver Broncos along with Pete Carnan, really good young linebacker of superstar development, but he's not going to play. He's on the last year of his contract, so we don't need him. Going to get as a first and a third next year, also trading up in the third round, 25 spots. Going to give up Duke Riley in a future pick, and we are going to select Jamichael Shepard, defensive tackle out of USC. He's not quite as good as Kai Cameo, but this is the next best thing, and he's actually rated a little bit higher than Kai Cameo, so I can't really complain. Hopefully, Jamichael Shepard can be nice depth at that defensive tackle spot. Going to make another trade. Uh, since we got Shepard, we don't really need Danny Shelton as much. He's going to the Bengals for a fourth-round pick. Round four, pick 20. 420 blaze it. I didn't even mean to get that pick on purpose. Uh, but we're going to get Gerald Jackson, safety out of Illinois, 70 overall with hidden development. He's not going to start right away, but could be good because Tracy Walker isn't getting any younger. Then going to trade our fifth and sixth rounders away for future picks because there's no one really good on the board. And then with our final seventh round pick, uh, Mr. Irrelevant will be kicker Tim John out of Boise State. This is the Matt Prater replacement. Obviously, Prater uh, is gone. He's not very good anymore. He wasn't good last year. So, uh, John ends up being a 71 overall, and this is how our draft ends. Only four players, but I'm quite happy with the four players, most notably Devontae Higgins in the first round, 74 hidden development trait. As I said, he will be either the number three or number four cornerback this season. Then uh, we obviously traded our second rounder away, moved up in the third for Jamichael Shepard, got Gerald Jackson, and then Tim John. So I looked around the rest of the league, and I think it's worth noting that the Packers drafted a superstar X-Factor quarterback in the second round. So our division now has Tez Lawson in his third year, obviously with us, with superstar X-Factor. Louis Salazar, a second-year quarterback with superstar X-Factor on the Vikings, and now a rookie for the Packers. So there are three young X-Factor quarterbacks in this division and then there's also the Bears with Mitchell Trubisky. We would finish out the offseason here with one final trade. Charles Harris going to the Cleveland Browns for Joe Porter, a backup tight end, 73 overall, only 22 years old with star development. So uh, he should be a nice complement for TJ Hawkinson. So that is how the offseason ended. I now wanted to do a roster evaluation before we got to the preseason. Quarterback, not a whole lot to discuss here. I think the only question is, will Le'Veon Worrell make the final roster or not? Tess Lawson and Matthew Stafford are pretty safe. Running back, same thing. Only four guys on the team. So maybe this team would like to add another running back down the line. Maybe see how Tony Pollard plays. Maybe look for a new change of pace back. Wide receivers should be a lot of fun. Obviously, we got our big three with Juju, Galladay, and Parnell. Got some nice depth pieces in Paris Campbell, Dwayne Stuber, a young superstar, and Akeem Perkins. And then these last guys, Fulgham, Martin, and Shaw. They'll be competing for roster spots. Tight end. Want to see who the number three tight end will be out of uh, Cordavius Finley and Vincent Clifton. The offensive line, uh, Akeem Downing will be playing left tackle this season. He will be switching from right tackle, obviously, now that Taylor Decker's gone. And the interior offensive line will stay exactly the same. Aaron Howard at left guard, Ragnall at center, Von Moulton at right guard. And then over at right tackle, we're going to start Marshall King, a raw fourth rounder we drafted a few years ago. But I think he is now ready. Uh, he is a 76 overall, and we got some good depth pieces on this offensive line as well in case he does struggle. Defensively, Jaquavius Highsmith, uh, he's solid, but want to see if some of these uh, undrafted guys can potentially make the roster. Right end, same thing with Trey Flowers, but want to see uh, how these young guys do. Forrest Jones and Deontay Fryer. Defensive tackle, we've obviously been looking for depth. Ed Oliver is great. Want to see some of these guys behind him and uh, Jermichael Shepard can make the roster out of Malcolm Cooper, Cole Addison, and Armin Bowie. 
Linebacker, uh, Mike Renwick is good. Want to see what Egubile and Dunlap can bring to the table. Middle linebacker, I like. We got three guys set in stone. Davis, Tobiano, and Jackson. Also signed an undrafted player, Keenan Becton. Maybe he can turn into something. Then right outside, Shaquem is great, but we signed Olaz Sunakami Adenye. I feel like I might have gotten that name right. I don't know. I, I think that's probably pretty close, but we signed him and another player to be depth. Corner, want to see who the number three corner will be. Will it be Devontae Higgins? Will it be Amani Rorier? Also looking at some of these depth players, see if we want to keep them around. Safety, just competing for roster spots. Guys like Raheem Cheek, Damon Tharp, uh, Obi Melifon. We'll see if they can make the final roster. We have three kickers and two punters as well. Chances are it'll be Tim John and Sam Martin, but it's at least worth taking a look at some of these other players. See if we can get younger at punter. See if Tim John is really the answer or not. So now let's get this show on the road on to the preseason. It's also worth noting that I do not play starters uh, during the preseason at all. I just don't like to. Uh, that's my style. The only starters who are playing are guys competing for starting jobs. And I also wanted to have Sharning Buga play a lot. Even though his starting role is set in stone, I did want to... Uh, play him a little bit more, but none of these guys are going to be starters for the most part. So I, ju I just don't like playing my starters in preseason. I don't think it's smart. I think it's a little bit risky. Even if we're a little bit less prepared heading into the season, it does save us from injury, which is the most important thing. So opening preseason game here against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at home. First game technically since the Super Bowl championship last year. And the title defense starts right now. As Tim John, the five foot seven rookie, has his ball kicked off in the preseason of season number five of the Lions franchise is underway. Toast to another great season of Detroit Lions football. So here's the Tampa Bay offense, led by Jameis Winston. He is still the quarterback. They have an X Factor backup though in Jack Jackson, which is ironic. Nice pass there on second down to OJ Howard. Wrapped up by number 59. I don't know if he's back up jersey numbers. I think that was a Meke Egbule. I think that was him. Third and seven now. Check down of a running back. That'll be a first down for the Bucks. Wrapped up by Devontae Higgins. And then fourth and inches. The Bucks going to go for the field goal. Try to get on the board first. And they would do just that as Tampa Bay will take a 3-0 lead. That's Sellers making the kick. So here comes the Lions. Matthew Stafford. In at quarterback, he was with the Los Angeles Chargers last year. Only threw nine passes. And obviously, before that, he's been a long-time lion. He is back in Detroit. Going to try to get a ring here. And the preseason does not get off to a great start. Tony Pollard loses four. No blocking on that play whatsoever. Now a second and 14. Here is Stafford. His first pass back in Detroit. is going to be caught by Paris Campbell. That's a big gain of 39 yards to open up the preseason. For Stafford, who has the backup job pretty much set in stone. Now another handoff for Tony Pollard. This time he loses five yards. I mean, these this Bucks run defense has been awesome so far. Third and two, Stafford going to drop back to throw it. Dumps it off for uh, the running back who drops it. Then Nick Bauden drops it. Both of them should have had it, but neither of them did. So now we get to see Jim John, his first kick as a lion from 49 yards out. He does make it. And the Lions will take a 3-0 lead, or tie the game up at 3, sorry, I'm, I've, I'm stupid. So now third and inches, famous Jameis, going to roll out, get the first down. Nice tackle there once again from Devontae Higgins. Now a third and 11. Here is famous Jameis, going to drop back to throw it, short pass caught. And that's a first down because of a missed tackle by one of the linebackers. I'm not sure who that was, but whoever it was, no, just no. So on to the second quarter now. Here's Jordan Howard opening up the frame with a big run. Wrapped up by, I believe, Jamal Agnew. Now a third and goal from the two. Hand off from big fella Jordan Howard who finds the end zone. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will take a 10-3 lead. Lions have it back. Third and seven. Here is Matthew Stafford. Bad pass. This is not the same prime 2016, 2017, 2018 Matthew Stafford that we all know and love. He's older. He's worse. Uh, there's some nice run defense, though, from the Lions. And Meke Egbule 
making the play, the former Houston Cougar. He played quite well in this game, his second tackle for loss. Now a third and four. Jack Jackson, obviously, in a quarterback. Nice first down four of a buck. So I'm pretty sure that was, no, I was about to say that's Devontae Higgins, but that's not Higgins with the tackle. Higgins has blue sleeves, not uh, white sleeves. So then Jack Jackson makes an ill-advised pass, but it's a pass interference actually on, on Darvarius Fisher. He could have made a play on that ball, but instead just a really bad play. If you want to make for roster, you can't have plays like that. But then the Lions uh, defense comes alive, making a stop there on a screen pass on first down. Now a 4th and 12, Tampa Bay. Going to send the field goal unit out. Sellers makes the kick, and the Bucks will now take a 13 2-3 lead. Will the Lions win streak uh, come to an end? If you can even count this as part of a win streak if they were to win this game. As Stafford with a nice pass over to Akeem Perkins, the free agent signing. Now a third and three. Passes caught by Raheem Martin, the second year man out of Washington. He was on the practice squad last year as an undrafted rookie. Will get to the end zone and the Lions will make it 13-10. to Now on to the second half. Le'Veon Worrell at quarterback. And he is not very good, as you can see. Really bad pass there. He's quite raw. He has some upside, but has a lot of work to do. So the Bucks have it back. Jack Jackson at quarterback. He hands it off to Howard, and he gets wrapped up by Jack's little brother or cousin or I don't know. Owen Jackson with the play. So now it is a uh, second and six for Detroit. Leonard Worrell still yet to make a completion, but that changes as he gets that one over to Shaw for the first down, gaining about 18 yards. Now 4th and 12 from the 46. Lions going to say screw it. It's preseason. Want to try some things out. So they're going to fake the punt. Sam Martin is sacked. So the fake obviously doesn't work. Bucks will get it back. 4th and 6. 41-yard field goal for Sellers. His kick is barely good. And Tampa Bay will take a 16-10 lead. Lions will get it back. Handoff for Tony Pollard. And he's going backwards. Really not a great game for Pollard, and it wasn't his fault. The run blocking was just atrocious. Third and 14 now, Worrell is going to be sacked. That's Devin White, the former LSU linebacker, bringing him down. Bucks now have it here in the fourth quarter, third and two. Addison makes the play in the backfield. Jordan Howard does not get the first down. Another defender was there too, so the Lions would get it back. And this game would really start to turn into a defensive battle. Here's Worrell on first down. Going to take a shot, and it's going to get intercepted. The play is made by Combs, and the Bucks will get it quickly back with plus field position. Now from the 35, Tampa Bay just going to try to make this a two-score game as Jackson is sacked. Emeke Egubele, or Egbule. It's Egbule, I think. I don't know. He gets the sack. Lions have it now, third and ten. Here is Le'Veon Worrell going to scramble with it. He's going to take a shot deep, and he barely overthrows his target, trying to get it to Zach Zenner. So now the Bucks have it back, and the Lions will get a stop. The pass is broken up, and Detroit will get it at the two. Well, that's a what-a-punt moment. And then here is Davion McDowell going to open up the drive with a nice gain of 19. Maybe this is the spark that Detroit needed, you know. Uh, maybe this is what will lead them to potentially scoring points, or maybe not. Zach Zenner loses four on the screen, courteous of a former LSU linebacker, Devin White. Now second and 14, Le'Veon Worrell trying to get a drive here. Only two completions on the day. He's going to get a third, as that one will go to Raheem Martin for a gain of 20. Good game so far for Martin, as he tries to make the roster this year. Short pass now over to Shaw. He's going to run out of bounds, and the Lions are starting to get into a groove. Le'Veon Worrell starting to play pretty well. Third and 11 now. Worrell dancing in the pocket. He has time. Going to try to make something out of nothing. As Le'Veon Worrell will run for the first down, gaining 16 yards. And Detroit is getting closer and closer. Second and eight. Over to Raheem Martin. He brings it inside the five to about the two. Now third and goal for one. Look at the clock. 22 seconds left. Handoff for Tony Pollard. He is stopped at the two, losing a yard. Fourth down and goal from the two. Can the Lions punch it in and win the game? Handoff for Davion McDowell. He got it. The Lions with the touchdown. Now they need the extra point for a win. The rookie, Tim John, feeling the pressure, and his kick is a beaut. 
right down Main Street, and the Lions come from behind to win the game. That's what we were saying all of last year, and that's what we're going to say again. Jack Jackson going to finish this game off with an interception. Nice catch there from Raheem Cheek. And the Lions will get the win 17-16. This game was Cheek's. Neither team looked good, but it's for preseason. What do you expect? Mainly backups played. Le'Veon World did not play all that well, except for the final drive. He was quite good. Matthew Stafford played pretty well, running the ball uh, not pretty. Davion McDowell was fine, but Tony Pollard, 14 carries, 29 yards, eek. In the receiving game, Raheem Martin, Kyle Shaw led the way, only one catch for Paris Campbell. The O-line was quite good, 14 tackles there for Jamal Agnew. He had a busy day, 5 for Darvarius Fisher. Not a whole lot of sacks or turnovers from the defense. Raheem Cheek did ha have the sack. Meke Egbule played really well. I was impressed with him. So we would send the next preseason game, and we got absolutely creamed. 35-7 by the Redskins. Win streak is kind of over. Matthew Stafford was decent. Le'Veon Worrell was awful. Running the ball, Tony Pollard did not do much once again. And really, the run offense as a whole kind of struggled. And then receiving, same deal. Not a whole lot. Dwayne Stuber was pretty good, but... It looks like the, the team really didn't play all that well, which isn't the end of the world. These guys are backups, you got to remember. But at the same time, you'd like to see your backups playing a little bit better. Uh, defensively, uh, Sharon Budka had 10 tackles leading the way. Uh, Damon Fart played pretty well, and every guy had 10 tackles. Couldn't really see it, but no sacks, no picks, nothing. Then the next preseason game against the Bears. We ended up losing once again, 38-20. to Matthew Stafford played well. Le'Veon Worrell did not. As you can tell, he's still really raw. He's still not good, uh, to say the least. Tony Pollard was a little bit better, but still not ideal. Uh, Dwayne Stuber led uh, receiving. Travis Fulgham, Tony Pollard, they were all solid, but really just not a whole lot to get excited over for this offense. Paris Campbell was the one with the touchdown. The O-line was all right, and then defensively, once again, uh, nothing real crazy here. The defense didn't play super well. Jermichael Shepard gets a sack, which is great. Gerald Jackson with an interception. You love to see that. Two guys who I'm sure will make for roster, but as depth pieces, like to see them doing well. So now the final game of the preseason, the... Green Bay Packers going to be taking on here the 1-2 Detroit Lions divisional showdown. We know these two teams don't like each other. The Packers, after a, the past few years where they've been really bad, they have a bright future. Obviously, a couple years ago, they have the number one pick getting cornerback Devon Dobbins, who looks like a superstar. They got uh, William Zachary. Is that his name? Zachary Weary. Okay. So Zachary Weary is the new Packer quarterback. He's going to be the starter, it looks like, right away. Superstar X-Factor. He is kind of nice, but he's also pretty raw. Only 72 overall. Has a lot of shoes to fill, obviously, the great Aaron Rodgers. Nice play right there from Devontae Adams. He gains 25. Expect you to see this connection a lot, uh, Packer fans, as there is McDonald for the touchdown. And Green Bay is on the board. They will take a 7 to nothing lead. He returns for Packer offense. Next drive, Zachary Weary on first down. Short pass is going to be caught by Wesley Steele. A former high draft pick a couple years ago. He brings it to the 8-yard line. And then the next play from the 8. Green Bay trying to make it a two-score game. And that they do. Zachary Weary over to Devontae Adams for the touchdown. And the Packers will make it 14-0. Lions have it. Here's Tony Pollard with a few blocks. He can be dangerous. And he's showing why on that run. Getting a nice gain right there. And Tony Pollard is dangerous when he has the ball in his hands. But... Uh, he just hasn't had a lot of blocks this preseason. Stafford with a nice play right there over to uh, the new backup tight end, Joe Butler. Is that his name? I don't even remember this guy's name. <laughs> Second and goal handoff for Tony Pollard. He doesn't get blocks there, and it shows. He loses five. Kevin King and Zadaria Smith with the play. It's now third and goal. Stafford going to look for Paris Campbell in the end zone, and he is out of bounds. Incomplete. So that'll force the field goal unit to come on. Psych! That one was more fake than my ex-girlfriend, Leonard Worrell, who cannot make a throw with all the time in the world, just heaves it up with three defenders in his face, and he gets it right on the money to the offensive tackle, Ty Money Glover, for the touchdown, and the Lions are now on the board. It's 14-7. Here's McDonald on third and two. 
Old McDonald had a farm, and he's going way back. E-I-E-I-O. Mani Uruarie with the tackle. And then next possession, Jelani Tavai makes the stop on third down for Detroit. So now their offense has it back. Third and launch. Stafford, risky throw, incomplete. And really, both defenses are shining. Third and two, another stop by the Lions' defense. This time, Emeke Egbule with the play. So, so, something has to give here. And that would be a big run from Tony Pollard as he gets it inside the 10 to about the 5. Big run from Pollard. And that's what this offense wants to see. Second and goal now from the 5. Play action fake. Stafford under pressure, and he's going to be sacked as Willie Henry going downstairs where Daddy hides the vodka. Fourth and goal, Lions not going to go for another fake. Tim John would make the field goal, and it is now 14-10. to 10. Packers on top. William Connor, of course, at quarterback. He makes a nice pass there on third and 12 over to Santiago for the first down, and the Packers will keep the chains moving. Now from the 30, second and four, Connor. Risky pass, and it's going to get picked off. You can't spell intercepted without the D, as it's Sharonin Budga, the third-year safety out of James Madison, making the play. Third and five now, Stafford looking to throw it. His pass is going to be short over to Shaw. He maybe gets one. Fourth and four, Lions say screw it. It's preseason. Why not have some fun? Nick Bowden would get sacked, however, on the play, so the Packers would now get it back. Second and goal from the two. Connor under pressure, and that would be a sack for Malcolm Dunlap. I think his name is Malcolm. Now third and goal from the seven. Connor under more pressure. This time it is Addison bringing him down. Fourth and goal. Here comes the field goal unit to make it a seven-point game, and the kick is blocked by Chidobe Awuzie. Obviously, he is a starter, but he is making an impact today on special teams. Picked up by Braden Lamb, and he is gone. Showboating to the end zone. Touchdown, Lions. And they will take a 14-7 lead. You love to see it. Packers have it back late in the half. Oh, and Jackson almost gets the sack. He does bring down the quarterback along with Addison. Cole Addison and Owen Jackson making that play. Now on to the second half. Le'Veon Worrell into the game. He's going to try to run it here, and uh, he brings it to the 47, and he is hurt. Leonard Wor or Le'Veon Worrell is down. Luckily, he would be able to return to the game, and the Lions would keep him in because they want to get a fair assessment of what he's made of. Long field goal there from Tim John. He does make it. So now it is 20 to 20-14. Le'Veon Whirl has it back from the 26. Toss for Tony Pollard, and he, or that's Davion McDowell, sorry. And he runs right into the defender for a loss of yardage. Now a third and 23. This might have been my favorite play of a whole preseason. Watch this. So Le'Veon Whirl, he scrambles to the pocket. He waits for the right time to throw it and launches a dart for Raheem Martin. As Le'Veon Whirl threaded the needle perfectly on that play. I don't think... Drew Brees could have made that throw, and Le'Veon Worrell does. That might give him a roster spot right there, or, and that play might take it away. As uh, he is sacked, 4th and 20, 420 plays it. Tim John for a 58-yard kick, and he doesn't quite have the leg as it is short. That's what she said, and specifically, that's what she told me. Packers have it back. William Connor with a nice pass over to Santiago for a nice gain. Now 4th and 9, Green Bay going to go for the field goal as the kick is good, and the Packers will cut the lead in half, making it a three-point game. That's the undrafted rookie Colin Denvers making the play. The Lions wanted to sign Denvers, have him compete with Tim John for the roster spot, but the Packers uh, signed Denvers before Detroit could. Nice pass from Worrell there to, I believe, Raheem Martin. Now from the 46, Worrell taking a shot for Raheem Martin once again, who brings it to the 16. Martin has really been impressive this preseason, and Le'Veon Wells made some great throws in this game. Third down now. For every great throw, you're going to have players like that. Interception for Jair Alexander, and the Green Bay Packers will get the ball back as they try to drive down the field and tie or take the lead. Second and one. Nice run here, or more so bad defense. The Lions just did not want to tackle, and that's Bacon with a nice gain. 
I'm sure that's getting some of you hungry. Now third and ten from the 14. Worrell. Risky pass, and it's picked off by Darvarius Fisher. What a play. He reads the quarterback like a book, jumps for receiver, gets the football, and forces the turnover. Lions have it back. Worrell launches a prayer for Cordavius Finley, former Mr. Irrelevant a couple years ago, and it is caught. Now from the 23, third down, Worrell looking deep. And this time it's to Akeem Perkins who brings it to the one. Uh, Le'Veon Worrell has only completed seven passes. He has 211 yards. That means he has pretty much 30 yards per completion, which is insane. First and goal handoff for Davion McDowell. He outruns the defender for the score. And the Lions are now up by 10. 27-17 Detroit trying to finish this game off strong. Short pass there caught by the white guy. He brings it to the 38 for a nice gain of about 21. Now 4th and 5. 50-yard field goal for the Packers, and it is off the mark. Looked like it was short. Also, it was wide left. And now uh, the Lions going to finish this game off. 4th and 1. They're going to go for it because they're so close. Davion McDowell gets it, and the Lions would just knee it from there pretty much. As the Detroit Lions get the win, 27-17. Ran, running, running the ball really well in this game. 175 total rushing yards. As Matthew Stafford with his worst preseason game, Le'Veon Morrell, uh, well, he, he made some really nice throws, but he was also still not great. But he made some t he made some nice deep balls. I got to give credit where credit's due. Uh, the team ran the ball really well for the first time this preseason. McDowell had a few nice plays. Tony Pollard was outstanding. Really good to see those guys playing well. Uh, Cordavius Finley had the big play. Perkins was solid. Raheem Martin with two really big plays. Glover with the touchdown. Joe Porter, that's his name. Joe Porter, that's the tight end, was solid. And then defensively as well. Interceptions for Darvarius Fisher along with Sharning Budga. Oh, and Jackson had a sack. One and a half sacks for Cole Addison. So now that the preseason is over, it's time to go through stats and time to see who will be getting cut and who will make the final roster. So looking at the numbers, Matthew Stafford, three touchdowns, no picks. He was really good. Le'Veon Worrell was not. He showed some flashes that last game, but that's all flashes. He's he's not ready to be an NFL quarterback. Running the ball, Tony Pollard was really good that last game, but other than that, really couldn't get the run game going. I guess that last game against the Packers, it was good. Receiving, Raheem Martin was a big play machine. Cordavius Finley and uh, I think Akeem Perkins was the other receiver over 100 yards. The offensive line was pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how the blocking was, at least the pass blocking. I don't know about the run blocking. Jamal Agnew leads the way in tackles with 31. No one had more than one pick or one and a half sacks, I think. I could be wrong about that. So uh, now for the moment of truth. Uh, other than the special team stats, which the backup kickers and punters didn't even play. Uh, so I guess they were just camp bodies, and spoiler alert, they're not making the team. Tim John only went three for five. He's raw, obviously. He's young, but, you know, he has good numbers, and I'm pretty confident in him. So Le'Veon Worrell will go to the practice squad. I believe in him for the future. Kyle Shaw going to the practice squad. I had a tough decision here between Raheem Martin and Travis Fulgham. I decided to cut Fulgham altogether, and Raheem Martin will be making the final roster. Vincent Clifton will be getting cut. Leonard Seamster, offensive tackle, getting cut. Uh, the interior offensive lineman would pretty much stay the same. Hudson Larson, an undrafted rookie, would go to the practice squad. Kevin Gilbert would get cut. Devon Watts, a defensive lineman, would go to the practice squad along with uh, Enrique Brown. Deontay Fryer would be cut. Forrest Jones makes the team. Armin Bowie going to the practice squad. But two undrafted rookies, Malcolm Cooper and Cole Addison, both make the final roster. Malcolm Dunlap gets cut. Keenan Becton to the practice squad. Edward Huntley will be getting cut. Uh, corner, we have a bazillion corners. Benji Cash, a former seventh rounder, going to get cut. Chris Johnson gets cut. And then I didn't really know what I wanted to do with these guys, so I decided to put Brandon or Braden Lamb on the roster or on the practice squad. Sorry, Darvarius Fisher makes the team, and then doing some uh, final cuts here with the safeties and the special teamers. So there you go. 
going to our goal is going to be to make the Super Bowl. We're trying to get the two Pete, trying to get another one, trying to make a dynasty. So that'll end the episode. Next episode will be opening game premiere within the next couple days against the Chicago Bears. Wanted to go through the schedule real quick for you guys. There are a lot of primetime games here. Obviously, our Thanksgiving game is against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And then the week after that, rematch on Monday Night Football at home. The final home game of the season, by the way, against the Kansas City Chiefs. A Super Bowl rematch. That should be fun. So that's going to end the episode. Here's a look of a roster and the depth chart heading into Season 5. For the most part, this team looks rather similar uh, to last year. A few differences. Obviously, guys like Harrison Smith, Taylor Decker, Miles Sanders, Justin Coleman, Matt Prater, they're all gone. But other than that, this team looks quite similar to last year. And I'm curious to see how some of these young guys can do, see how they progress. So next episode, premiere opening day against Mitchell Trubisky and the Chicago Bears. Make sure to stay tuned for that. Hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and have a good one. Peace out.